Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this pattern in Adobe Photoshop. First off, go ahead and create a new document. We'll click on New File here. And I'm going to use the dimensions of 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels, making sure Artboards is unselected because we are going to use the uh, Pattern Preview tool and it doesn't work if you have Artboard selected. Just setting my resolution to 300 pixels per inch, color mode is RGB color, and then background content set to transparent. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. From here, I'm going to create a grid. So I'm going to go to view, new guide layout, and then I'm going to use two columns and two rows, and then I'm going to click on OK. From here, I'm going to use the marquee tool M on the keyboard. With those grid lines, I'm just going to draw out a square. And then I'm going to fill that with a color. I'm going to push a D on the keyboard to get back to my default. And then just going to go Option or Alt Delete to fill it in with my foreground color. I'm going to deselect Command or Control D here. Uh, with this layer, I'm going to right click and convert it to a smart object double clicking on this layer, opening up my smart object here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off these grids and we're going to go view clear guides. And then I'm going to add, turn off this layer, just add a new layer here. I'm going to create a new guide layout. So we're going to go view new guide layout. This time I'm going to do uh, four columns and four rows, clicking on OK. With my uh, marquee still selected, I'm going to go ahead and start selecting some of these uh, squares here. And then you'll want to make sure this icon is selected where you can add to your selection. And then we're going to continue to drag out our selection here using our guides uh, to create our full uh, selection here. And then I'm going to fill that with black option or alt delete and then we're going to go command or control deselect and we have our basic image here i'm going to turn this background layer on and i'm going to select just a new color here i'm going to fill it with our foreground color option or alt delete here and then i'm going to go ahead and save this smart object command or control s command or control w to close it and we have our object here I usually like to have that background color so I can see visually better uh, what's going on with the design. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer, Command or Control J, and we're going to do that. So we have four different objects. Using the Move tool, V on the keyboard, I'm just going to drag it to the other corners here. So we have our uh, basic repeating element here. Uh, zooming out, Command or Control minus key, just so we can see it better. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those grid lines. So let's go view clear canvas guides. And then I'm going to turn on my pattern preview tool. Uh, with this pattern, I'm going to use one of my action packs uh, that I use just to kind of help speed up the workflow. Uh, for this particular action, you can easily turn on and off the uh, pattern preview tool. To do that, normally you're going to go to View, Pattern Preview, and that will turn it on here. But as you can see with this, you can easily turn it on with just a click of a button. My basic action pack set is available for purchase in my Etsy shop, and I will leave a link in the description below. Now that we have our basic repeat and our pattern preview turned on, you can see uh, the start of a pattern here. But what's fun about doing it this way is you can now uh, play with the orientation of these uh, objects and see how it looks when you change it. So, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate some of these objects. Again, I'm going to use my action pack here, but if you want to uh, rotate something, you're going to go Command or Control T, and then you can um, add in that rotation value there. Uh, for this, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. And then I'm going to do the same here. And then we're going to do it one more. And then let's go with this one. This I can go the opposite 90 degrees to get the effect that I want where we're creating that kind of rotating uh, spiral there. Once I get a pattern that I like, I'm going to double click back into my smart object and turn off that layer. Command or Control S 
to save it, Command or Control W to close it, and then we will create a pattern here. To define this pattern, you could go to Edit Define Pattern. Again, I'm going to use one of my actions just to do it by a click of the button, and you can see my new pattern here. And then let's go ahead and test this pattern. So I'm going to create a new document file, new. Uh, this time I'm going to use the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper, 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels. Um, this time I'm going to select artboards just in case I want to use more than one artboard. Resolution set to 300 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB color. And then we'll just leave our background content set to transparent. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. From here, I'm just going to use an action pattern test, which basically brings up a background color fill layer, a pattern fill layer, and then another color fill layer with a clipping mask to that pattern. That way I can just click on my pattern fill layer, select my new pattern, and I can see it tested here. With a pattern, you always have the option to double click on this layer and then you can choose to scale it if you'd like, if you want to get a smaller version. And then with the dialog box open, if you move it around, you can always reposition it here on the canvas if you want to change where it starts. If you want to get back to the original, just click on snap to origin and it will return to its original orientation here. And then we'll just go ahead and click on OK. And then with the color fill layers, you can uh, adjust the colors that you are using. So I'm just going to um, use some predetermined colors here in my swatch and then just test out a different color here. Let's go ahead and try to create another pattern here. Clicking on the smart object again, I'm just going to turn on that back layer. Command or Control Save, Command or Control W to uh, be able to see it there. And then I'm just going to play uh, with the orientation here. Selecting this bottom one here, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees so we match the one on top. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it to match the original, but this time I'm going to uh, flip it vertically here. And then I want this one matching that one, so I'm going to flip it horizontally to get it the same here. So I currently we have kind of this T pattern. But instead of having it this block pattern, I'm going to uh, select these two layers here and then I'm just going to bring it down so we get more of a half drop repeat uh, pattern here. And then once you get it situated the way you like, I'm just going to go back in here, turn off this color, saving it, Command or Control S, Command or Control W to close it. And then I'm going to go ahead and define my pattern. So I have my new pattern here. And then we'll jump back over into our document. Uh, zooming out here, Command and Control minus, I'm going to access the artboard tool, which is right here. You're going to right click artboard tool. Just clicking on the outside here, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut option or alt click and then just dragging it to the side here and that makes a duplicate copy of your artboard and then selecting my pattern layer i'm going to select my new pattern and then let's go ahead and just change the colors here selecting from my swatch panel it's a little bright there we go okay and now if i want to save this as digital scrapbook paper um, when doing this, I suggest that you go ahead and name your artboards. So I'm just going to go one lemon paper lab. And then just create a second one here. If you name your artboards when you go to save it, that's going to be the name of the file that gets saved. So now we're going to go to file, export, export as. Here under scale all, you can add a suffix to your file naming structure. So in this case, we have our basic naming format here. And then if we want to give it a, an additional name to it, I'm just going to add a dash and then just say geometric. And that will append this to the back end of these file names when you go to save it. And then I'm just going to select both of these layers, clicking there, shift clicked, and then you can see both of them in the dialog box here. Under file settings, we are going to save it as JPEG, but you do have the option to save it as, as PNG. 
Uh, generally for digital scrapbook paper, you want a high quality, so you can bring up the quality here. I just note that the higher the quality, the larger the file size. And then just scrolling down, I like to click embed color profile, and then you can just click to export. Select your file and then just click to open. Bringing up my file here, you'll notice that it automatically saved the two different files and then it has the geometric appended at the end here. And then as you can see, we have our digital scrapbook paper. If we click to open it up, we can see our uh, paper that we have saved. Thank you for watching this video on how to create this fun geometric pattern in Adobe Photoshop using the help of grids. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Be sure to check out my other video tutorials on how to create patterns in Adobe Photoshop. In this tutorial, I used my Photoshop actions for pattern design, which helps to speed up your workflow. And I will leave a link to that product in my Etsy shop. Thank you for watching this video. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.